do. Uh, the, the kids who are involved with jazz, they sign up to be in the group, and they get assigned to a lunch period. And so they give up out of their 25 or 35 minute lunch, they give up 15 or 20 minutes out of that time to come in and learn these pieces. And since we're on the block schedule, that means they only rehearse every other day. So they get 15 minutes on these songs every other day. <laughs> exactly, that's kind of the way I feel about it too. It's a little crazy, but they're getting a lot of experience, getting a chance to actually sing some music that they wouldn't get a chance to. Uh, we had a couple of students that didn't really fit into that pattern very well. And they said, but we really want to sing jazz. I said, you really want to sing a solo? They said, OK. So we have two soloists for you tonight. Our first one's going to be uh, Jelaine Heitkotter. They're not in the program. We're going to kind of sneak them in. <coughs> too. 
So we're pleased to be here tonight, and we're going to open up with a Herbie Hancock tune called Chameleon.
get my own mic. We're going to bring up our lovely vocalist, Miss Mariah Calabon, and she's going to sing a couple tunes. The first of which was is actually an old tune made recently popular again by Michael Bublé. This is Sway.
change of pace now for all you romantic folks out there. Little Darling by Neil Hefty. being such a great audience. It's always a pleasure to be here, especially with my old school chum, Bob Erickson. He's older than I am. <laughs> I bet you can tell. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're going to close out with one of our signature tunes, and uh, this is also for Kevin's mom, Mrs. Courtney. Birdling.
Yesterday 
introduce our group. Over here in our designer section, we have Julian and Nick Gamrock. In our also section, we have E2 and Tatiana. And our low bases, we have Eric and Justin. And our sassy sopranos, we have Catherine, Izzy, and myself, Jasmine. And I'd like to introduce our awesome band here. We have our uh, special guest, Mr. Squires on the drums. <laughs> Our next song is Organ Fugue, which was originally written by Johann, jo Johann Sebastian Bach, which was originally written for an organ, but um, Ward Swingle rewrote it and it was written for a vocal piece. And, um, <laughs> and we'd be, we would like to sing it for you guys. Thank you. Enjoy. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. 
Uh, the next, that, that tune was just a little off the top by Jay Chadwick. The next one we're going to do is Strike Up the Band. It's a George and Ira Gershwin tune, arrangement by Ralph Ford. You're going to hear this uh, particular arrangement takes us through three or four different styles. <coughs> Samba that recurs a couple times. There'll be an upswing, kind of bluesy, slow swing, and then it ends with a nice little waltz. This is Strike Up Band. something completely different. Uh, Live in La Vida Loca is a Ricky Martin tune, made popular in 1999. It became, I read this on Wikipedia earlier today, the first, uh, the first U.S. number one single to be completely produced through Pro Tools. Those of you who know what Pro Tools are, it's a recording, it's a recording studio for your computer. Uh, and since then, I think probably a whole bunch of them have been done that way. This is uh, our own treatment, which has not been done by Pro Tools. Uh, live in La Vida Loca.
next song, Autumn Leaves, I did a lot of thinking about this. It is not autumn. I realize that. It's not the right time to play the song, but I figured out a way to pull this off. Um, and I found some interesting bits of information. It's written by a Hungarian guy named Joseph Kosma, uh, with lyrics by a French guy named... Oui, oui. oui Jacques Prévert. <laughs> then, go across the ocean to the U.S., and Johnny Mercer, a very famous songwriter and lyricist, wrote English lyrics for it. However, the version we are doing is a bossa nova, which is in Brazil, comes from Brazil, where it is autumn. <laughs> something a little different within our program because we're taking the time with a larger audience in our jazz concert to make a presentation to one of our outstanding seniors. There is administered through the Instrumentalist Company a national award for jazz superiority in music performance called the Louis Armstrong Award. One of the greatest of the jazz musicians certainly that the United States has ever known and uh, well remembered for his versions of Hello Dolly and uh, tunes from New Orleans and Chicago, Memphis and wonderful places in between. The Louis Armstrong Award is given to a student who has outstanding musicianship, that's really a given, has wonderful individual creativity because in the world of jazz you have to be quite the individual soloist and performer. 
and they also must have wonderful character. Um, our recipient tonight certainly has all three of those traits, characteristics. I think probably though the most enjoyable for those of us in the music department at Hoffman is the character of this particular individual. One who almost has multiple personalities. Um, he's quite the character and um, lives by the example of one a lot of times and yet is a wonderful member of an ensemble as necessary. I would like to present tonight the Louis Armstrong Jazz Award for 2011 to Mr. Zach Lentino. been my pleasure to just listen to this program tonight. For a lot of reasons, we have some individuals stepping up and doing a lot with the jazz program. I know that uh, earlier you met Mr. Benchish and Mr. Squires. Um, without these two gentlemen to help lead us in our musicianship, uh, we certainly couldn't have achieved what we achieved tonight with this jazz ensemble. But the bulk of the credit goes to a Hoffman graduate a uh, member of District 54 in years gone by, although not in the jazz ensemble, but Mr. Dave Orlitz, thank you. So I don't think there was a District 54 jazz band when I was, um, <laughs> was that long ago. Our last thing that we're going to close with, uh, for you all tonight is uh, Beefsteak Charlie's, which is the name of a restaurant in New York City uh, that opened in 1917, and in the 50s and 60s it was uh, kind of a haven for jazz musicians. And there's actually a Hoffman co connection to this restaurant. In 2003, I thought about this stuff. Here you all, check my nothing. Uh, in 2003, the Hoffman band took a trip to New York City, and we ate at the Beef State Charlie's <laughs> chain restaurant at the time, but it was it spurred from the original restaurant. For what it's worth. <laughs>